Good morning, everybody. God bless you all today. Good to see you, good to everyone. See you. Yes, uh, boy, it's good. Good crowd today. Good it's, to see you. Yeah. Smiling faces. Looks good. Yeah, it's been a busy Looks, week. Just finished up with camp. Yeah, camp was good. Yeah, yeah. I appreciate all those that worked. Amen. Made well, a lot possible. of people. We ought to ask everybody who had anything at all to do with camp this past week, junior camp, to stand just so we know how many people it took to work on that camp. Uh, John, you sitting there. Yeah. Miss Judy. Yeah. Well, we appreciate it. And God the, bless you all. Thank you so much. And then, and then uh, our director or whatever, uh, minister, James and, James and Tiffany, yeah. they, they're, you know, they attend church in northern Kentucky. They were here all week to Came help. Came down and, to teach and, and preach and take care of kids. And uh, it, was just a, it was so good. And we got yeah. next week coming up. Jun uh, teen camp is coming up starting uh, tomorrow. Yeah. And uh, we're looking forward to a great camp. This is our first overnight camp now in couple years we're going to try Two, three yeah. years we're, we're giving it a shot see how it goes uh, but i think we got it well under control yeah jake's yeah. ready right jake and bailey they're ready to go with yeah bernie and every, whoever's involved man jake, a lot of bailey folks. bernie there's a whole yeah. host of people betty kathy involved in that one too yeah yeah she's cooking well i tell you yeah. harold's carrying stuff in <laughs> all right running errands looking forward to it yeah oh yeah. it's gonna be great yeah you know, it's last week I was thinking about July. You know, we was off Monday. Yeah, we had were. all them, yeah, all the festivities of July Fourth, and I was getting a glass of milk there. And June twenty seventh date. You know, Tim would have thrown that away, but now I go with those smell tests. Is that what you folks do? <laughs> so if it's that date's on there for a reason. Yeah, and the reason I is call him up. throw it away. No, July 4th is still good. June 27th today. Anyway, know. here I got you a little question. Is your walk talk, does it speak louder than your talk talk? Yeah. Or does your talk talk speak louder than your walk talk? That's a good question. Yeah, yeah it is. You want me to answer that? I yeah. hope not. Yeah, I answer. Uh, <laughs> no. no, I hope my walk and talk are both loud. Well, If they're for Jesus, yeah. But your walk talk should be... Speak louder than your talk talk, right? Actions should speak louder than the words, I well, guess. But they do. They right? do, anyway. Hopefully they, they do. should or not, they That's, do. That should be our yeah. goal, that our walk talk speak louder than our talk talk. But sometimes our talk talk speaks louder than our walk talk. I think everybody's confused out there, but <laughs> there was some truth to that. All right. Anyway. <laughs> What else we got going on? Any birthdays, anniversaries, uh, new visitors? Let's see. Do we have birthdays, anniversaries? Hey, we know. I know we had. Um, now Dana went to uh, Chicago for FBLA, like the national something. Um, and I'm proud of Dana and uh, Bobby. Was there anyone else from the church that went up there to that? That was a pretty, a pretty big deal. So I'm proud of them for that. Yeah. Um, any anniversaries, birthdays? Philip, you have a birthday. Happy birthday All to right. you. And Collins has one back there. All right, Collins. Collins. Happy birthday. Yeah. Linda's tomorrow. Is tomorrow. Linda. All right. Tomorrow. All right. Coming up. Good deal. Any anniversaries? Linda's birthday. Oh, Linda's got a birthday back here. The other Linda. Oh, Linda, happy birthday. And then Linda, 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 Linda. Good to see Linda today uh, back with us. And Stephanie. You're not coming to sing, are you? No. Oh. Got nervous there for just a minute. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All That's right. great. Any new ones with us? Raise your hand if you would. Anybody here? I saw a gentleman. All right. Yeah, yeah, a Good couple deal. new ones. Thank Good. you all. Good to have you all with us. And uh, wh how about just a name and where are you from? 
All right. Great to have you all Glad with to us today. have Atkins, folks, from Pike Bless County. You. And then, yeah, say it again. All right. All right. Glad to have Good. you with us. Amen. Great to have you all with us today. God bless you. All right. We ready to have church? I think we're ready. Anything else? I think we're ready to go. Let let's us worship. As we begin. Let's worship. Number 64, let's yeah. all join us singing. To God be the glory. Great things How he hath done. done. <laughs> To God be the glory, great things He hath done. So loved He the world that He gave us His Son, who yielded His life and atonement for sin, and opened the light gate that all may go in. Sing it now, praise the Lord. Amen. Father, we thank you for all the great things you've done and that you do all the time. I pray that we'd never fail to praise you for your goodness and mercy and grace. And Father, above all things, we thank you for the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior who came and died in our place for our sins, rose again to give us eternal life, and even now prays for us and provides for us every day. And Father, I thank you for every person here today, and I pray that you'd meet every need that they have, especially their spiritual needs, especially if there's someone here without the Lord Jesus, we pray they would be saved today. And Lord, we have much sickness and, and many needs among the church family, and I pray that you would meet those. And today, I pray that you would encourage each person, and Father, help us to trust you with all of our hearts, knowing that you're going to work all things out for good. I pray, Lord, you'd bless this service. I pray Jesus would be lifted up in all that we do and that you'd receive glory from it. I pray, Father, for our camp coming up this week, that you'd bless those who are working, uh, the students, the kids who are there. And, Lord, we just pray for their spiritual well-being, uh, that they grow to be disciples of the Lord Jesus, that those who are not saved would be. And I just pray to be a great week. Lord, I pray all of our ministries uh, would please you and be what we need to be doing. Give us great compassion uh, for the lost, I pray. Just bless us during this service. I pray our worship will be pure. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. And uh, let's continue singing number 109. So we all join us singing, Standing on the Promise. All right, here we go. 
That's all we have, right? It's the promises of God. That's the only true promise that we have in society today. Now listen as the choir sings. When I looked up, and he looked down.
Please turn with me to Mark chapter 10. I want to uh, talk about some things, kind of um, follow up on uh, last Sunday, some of the things we talked about uh, going on in our our country. My my heart is burdened for our, uh, our youth. My soul is grieved over what's going on and the attacks upon them and um, we, we need to be um, we need to be aware uh, we need to be alert we need to be prepared parents listen carefully grandparents 
Listen carefully. Sunday school teachers, youth teachers, listen carefully. There, there is a spiritual warfare for our kids. Yeah. And um, you, you better be on the ball. And you better know what's going on in their lives. Amen. Don't hide. Don't just let things go on. Find out. Mark chapter 10, verse 13. And they brought young children to him, that's to Jesus, that he should touch them, that is to bless them. And his disciples rebuked those that brought them. The disciples saw them as a distraction. Uh, the disciples saw them as something that would, that would interrupt Jesus. Well, they obviously didn't know the heart of Jesus. And when he saw it, he was much displeased. And he said unto them, Suffer the little children, or allow the little children to come unto me, and forbid them not. For of such is the kingdom of God. Verily I say unto you, whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child, he shall not enter therein. Meaning, you don't receive him with childlike faith of wonderment and trust. You will not receive him. And you'll not enter into heaven. And he took them up in his arms, put his hands upon them, and blessed them. Father, we thank you uh, for your word and its truth and its power. And Father, we are thankful you love the little children of the world. Red and yellow, black and white, they're all precious in your sight. I pray that as we study together today, every word spoken would be yours and not mine. And that your will is done in our lives. And help us, Father, by your power to save our children. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You know, we have, um, over the years, there are some who... As, as a church family and, and even as parents, we, we find our kids as inconvenient. They find them as trouble. I'll tell you, I, I applaud our youth workers who, who not only the work they do, but they have to also put up with comments about they're noisy or they're loud or they're misbehaving or they're this or they're that. And sometimes they are. And sometimes we have to deal with that. But the, the ministry to children is the most important ministry we have. And we need to, we need to love them. We need to teach them. We need to reach them for the Lord Jesus Christ. And so today, I want us to just look at these things. Jesus in this, in this passage, he rebuked the disciples. He was displeased that they tried to keep the children away. I'm thankful that we have a host of children in here. We're having them all the time. We're having them and we're bringing them in. And praise God for that. But we can't afford to miss the opportunity to reach them for the Lord Jesus Christ. Right. And the number one role is parents. It's your job. It's your job. And then church, it's our job to come alongside them and help them. Because sometimes parents need help. Sometimes they need some training. Sometimes they need to know more about the scriptures. 
But I just want to talk about this today and what's going on in our world and how we must be prepared for this. And let me give you some things. Um, you know, we've been talking about the unborn, and, uh, and, and I'm glad we have. We need to support life, and we need to fight against the, the, the forces of evil that would kill unborn babies. Amen. And just as we think, and just as we think laws are passed to protect them, then unelected um, judges overturn laws that are that went against what the Supreme Court said. Yeah. I couldn't believe the one in Kentucky that did that. And Kentucky had a law already prepared, as many states did, to save lives of babies. And then that was overturned. Of course, the story still continues. But anyway, we've been talking about, we've been dwelling on the unborn. And we need to continue that fight to save their lives. But today I want to talk about those that are born. And those that are living. And those that are growing up. And, and what we need to be aware of as, as, uh, as parents and grandparents and teachers and leaders as to what some of the things that are happening and as we look at this here are enemies and and I, I, I want to be careful uh, with one of these but because I want you to understand what I'm talking about and what's going on but here's the enemies of our uh, children one of course is the devil now I want you to I want you to look at this I want you to look in 1 Peter uh, 5. Listen to this in verse 8. Be sober, be vigilant. Now, parents, especially, be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion walking about seeking whom he may devour. He wants to devour our kids. You know that? He wants to devour our kids. Um, th there's so many ways that he is attacking them through social media, uh, through peer pressure, through all kinds of public discourse. We, we, we need to be aware, be alert to what the devil does. Be smart. The most precious thing you have are your kids. Treat them as the most precious thing you have. And nothing, nothing should keep you from, from guarding them, from watching over them. And then there's the world. When, when you think our world can't get any crazier, it gets crazier. Yeah. And, um, and, and, and we need to be we need to be aware. And then, of course, themselves. I mean, our flesh, uh, we, we know how the flesh is strong, evil. I mean, we're saved. Those of us who know Christ as Savior, we're saved. And, and we're, a new, we're a new creation. We have a new nature. But we still have the old flesh that we've got to battle. And the flesh wants to lead us astray. And the Bible talks about that in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the, uh, the eyes and the pride of life. Those things are in our old nature that we've got to deal with all the time, every day. And our kids have those same struggles. And we need to be aware of that. As they grow up, those, of course, intensify. And then I want to use the word here. I want to talk about perversions. Our termination, our term using a pervert title or perversions is very narrow. Normally it's a sexual predator, a uh, sexual predator upon kids. But there are perversions in many ways. 
And the word perversion means to distort. It means to corrupt. It means to alter an established something. And in this case, we're talking about God's laws and God's standards. Now, perversions can come in many ways. For instance, you could say this. That those who, the Galatians, uh, we studied that study of, in, in our uh, study on Sunday nights of Galatians, we studied how that any, anyone who would add to, take from, distort the gospel of the Lord Jesus in any way, that's a perversion. Yeah. And so if there are pastors, teachers, theologians, who are saying, for instance, there's another God, there are other ways to get to heaven, that you need to add something to the gospel or take something away from the gospel, you could call them a pervert because they're perverting the gospel. And Jesus said, I mean, as Paul wrote the, the, uh, with, under the direction of the Holy Spirit, I mean, that is a serious thing. He said, let him be accursed, anyone who would pervert the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because that's the only hope of our world. And so we have to be careful. Our kids have to understand as they're bombarded with, as a matter of fact, in some places, it's hate speech. If you say, as I'm saying, that the Lord Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven, faith in the Lord Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven, some people will claim that is hate speech. When in fact, that is love speech. Because I love you enough to tell you the truth about the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. If I just let you go believing that there are several ways and that any gospel, any faith, as long as you're sincere is okay, I wouldn't love you. That would be hate speech. And yet, your kids one day will face that. There's already nations. I believe Canada has a, has a law that is pretty... Uh, uh, pretty broad about hate speech, including in religion. Now, it will happen here if we're not careful, if we're not bold, if we're not aggressive, if we don't stand strong for the faith of the Lord Jesus. And then, in our society, there is the perversion of marriage. God created, instituted marriage and performed the first one in Adam and Eve, man and woman. He never intended for men to be married to men or women to be married to women, but that a man is married to a woman. Any other thing is a perversion. That's according to God's word. That's not hate speech. That is truth. Amen. There is a perversion of, um, of creation when, when boys want to be girls and girls want to be boys and they are encouraged in many places to do that. Or, that's that, or that it's okay. Or that we're to fill out forms saying what we want to be. That's a perversion of creation. God created you a man or a woman. Amen. A male or a female. And that's not your choice. That's his choice. And he made you that way. I mean, I've read these these accounts of things that's going on in our nation and, 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 how, and how children, teenagers, want to alter themselves. I'm 
trying to be kind. I notice young children in here, and I'm, I'm trying to be appropriate that will alter themselves so that they can change their gender. God, God created your gender. And he, now listen, and he loves you the way he created you. He loves you. He has a plan for your life. And he'll meet your every need. And so whatever causes those thoughts and 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 things that you, you want to change that's a perversion of what God has for you Amen. and how he created you and the plan he has for your life and then there's a perversion of truth across our land of truth I told you about the study where people prefer they they would rather have their preference than the truth. In other words, they'd rather be told what they want to hear rather than the truth. Now, that'd be like me. It'd be easy if you come in here and I just give you a, a, a little happy meal that every Sunday you come to the Mech Church and you get a happy meal and then you go home feeling warm and fuzzy. But that wouldn't be the truth. Because things aren't always happy. And there's times you need the Lord Jesus Christ during the chaos and the crisis of your lives. And, and, and so we, we have to declare the truth, whatever it is. And, and you, you ought to accept the truth of God's word. If it convicts us, if it scolds us, if it hurts our feelings... We ought to thank God that he cares enough to tell us the truth. Amen. And so, as we look at this, how can we, and especially parents, teachers, how can we save the children? One is make time for them. Listen. Listen. You, you, one of the tricks of the devil is this. He takes up your time. How many of y'all have a lot of time left over? How many of you have had time left over? No, we, we, we go nonstop all the time. We need more time. It'd be good to have about 30 hours in a day, wouldn't it? The Bible says, redeem the time. Because the days are evil. What that is saying is, you have limited time, use it wisely. Parents, you have to make hard choices. You've got this, and this, and this, and they're here, then here are your sons and daughters. They need your time. I've told you over and over the, the, the little phrase you spell love, T I M E. Your kids need your time. You know what? The, the little kids, li little kids, now some of your kids, they're unbelievably bright. Uh, the, the, the little kids are a lot smarter than me. But in another way, the kids are gullible in that they believe everything we say, they think we're heroes, they think we're just great. And they, they just can't wait to be with us. They love us unconditionally. And so we need to be careful that we're worthy of their love in the way we spend time with them, the way we love them, the way we set priorities. We need to spend time with our kids. And listen, you only have a short time. Raising kids takes work. Work. It takes work. You have to stay at it all the time. It's a priority.
then tell them about Jesus. Now listen, there's so many things out there. Now, here's, here's where you've got to be careful. And again, I'm going to have to be appropriate looking around here. Uh, I want to be careful. Uh, but there's sometimes we teach them about people that they, when they grow up, they find out, well, maybe they weren't real. And if you're not careful, they may think the same thing about the Lord Jesus Christ. If you talk about him a little bit here and there, and yet he's not evident in your life, they may grow up believing he's not real either. You know what I'm saying? You need to tell them about Jesus. And let me tell you, the priority of your life needs to be that they are saved. Nothing else matters. I gave you a, a little quote not long ago, and I've lost that piece of paper. Uh, I wish I had it so I could remind you often. The percentage of kids who grow up to be professional ball players is like 1% or less, probably less than 1%. Randy, you figure it up. We've got 300 million people. I don't know how many are kids and how many end up in the major leagues, but all of that, let's say it's 2%. Now, I'm not dashing anybody's goals or dreams or anything. I'm just saying that's the statistic. To become a pro is extremely rare. So let's say 2% of kids are going to grow up to be a pro. 100% of them will stand before Jesus one day. They need to be prepared to stand before Jesus and your number one priority is lead them to Jesus Christ. Amen. So tell them about him. And then take them. Take them where? Take them to church. Take them. Take them to Sunday school. Take them to church. Take them to youth group. Take them to every opportunity you have to reinforce biblical principles in their lives. Amen. Now, you well know that church will only be as important to them as it is to you. I mean, they may love it right now, but they're going to be just like you when you grow up, when they grow up. And if it's not important to you, it will not be important to them. I'm telling you. And I'll remind you again, as I said last week, dads, it's your responsibility. You've been given the spiritual responsibility for your home. Right. And it's your responsibility to lead your family in spiritual, biblical ways. Your responsibility. And don't you think you won't stand before the Lord Jesus one day and give an account for how you led your home and your kids. The Bible even has a specific verse for you about fathers. Make sure you raise your children in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. That is to you directly, dads. Take them to church, to Sunday school. Take them to youth group. Take them to camp. Take them to places to reinforce the Lord Jesus and biblical principles in their lives. Now I'm telling you, they, they're impressionable and this is the time to teach them. They're smart and they pick up these things and you know, I, I laugh sometimes at some of the stories you tell on, the, on Facebook that your kids have done. Things they've said, things they've done. I laugh at them. I mean, they're so bright and they're so funny, but they're perceptive. And they're watching you. And they're learning from what you do. As David was doing all this talk and walk stuff, 
up here. They're learning from what you do, not just what you say. Teach them, the Bible says. Teach them is next. And I want you to listen to this verse. And we're winding down the time here as always. But I want you to listen to this verse in Deuteronomy 6-7. It's important. It's talking about the words of God in verses 5 and 6. Now listen in verse 7. And thou shalt teach them the words of God, the word of God. Thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. And shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, when thou walkest by the way, when thou liest down, when thou risest. And what this saying is, you not only teach them, by word, but you teach them by example. Because they see you living what you teach them. They see you as you tell them to trust Jesus. They see you whether you trust Jesus or not. They see whether you live by faith or anxiety. They see whether you, you, you live by trust or worry. They see how you carry out the Bible in front of them. Teach them. And the word there is diligently. Diligently. I know there are parents who have stood for hours and hours and hours and hours and thrown batting practice to kids. And have never sat down and discussed this word with them. Teach them while you have them. And then, lastly, is train them. Now, what's the difference, you say, in teaching them and training them? Well, training them is the application. It's like when I preach, I like to have an application. There's things I want you to be able, when you leave here, you'll think of those things and, and apply them to your life. Uh, train them means to prepare them for life. We, we prepare them for all kinds of things. I mean, how many of you have spent all kinds of time uh, doing homework for your kids. I meant with your kids. <laughs> Not for your kids. How many of you stayed up late writing a paper with your kids? How many of you have prepared them for school? And yet, what about preparing them for life? All the time I comment to people who are getting married. Some of you may have heard this before. And that is, people spend so much time and money on the wedding. And nothing wrong with that. Don't get on me about this. I'm just saying something that's powerful here if you'll listen. They spend time and money on the wedding. And even if you have two or three songs and light candles and do everything, it's what, 15 minutes? I mean, you may have one that really drags on till 20 minutes. <laughs> Tops. But you spend little time preparing for the marriage, which is supposed to last a lifetime. We prepare kids for short-term things. But many times we don't prepare them for life. And so when these issues come, they don't know what to do. They don't know where to turn. And they find out that parents don't always have all the answers. The parents can't see down in their hearts. Parents can't see in their minds. Parents can't read what's going on. And so they're ill-equipped to handle 
all those things. And they need to know that there's someone they can go to who knows them inside out. Who has the answers for them. They need to know that in the Lord Jesus Christ there is hope no matter what's going on in their life, no matter how they feel, no matter how discouraged or disappointed they are, that the Lord Jesus always has hope for them. We need to train them for life. Parents, grandparents, church, teachers, we need to train them for life. And teach them about eternal life. There's things I know that I know you're very busy. I know things get out of hand sometimes. And I, th I know things can be distorted. I know they can be corrupted. But this book has the answers to life and to godliness. And I just have a burden. I just, some things I read this week, it just breaks my heart. It grieves my soul over young people and what's happening in our country. So many things that they are confronted with and they have pressure on them we, we, we need to take the time make the time to be sure they're equipped for all of this they need to know Jesus they need to know his word and all of us need to have a diligent commitment to being involved in the lives of our children and church we need to be diligent in coming alongside our, our parents and helping them. It's our most important ministry. God bless you. Father, thank you for the answers to life in your word. Thank you for the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, I pray that you would help parents, grandparents, the church to do the things we need to do to save our children save them from Satan the world save them from themselves save them from perversions of your truth of your plan I pray dear God you'd help us to be faithful to be diligent please bless these kids if there's someone here today without Christ as Savior, I pray they would be saved. Please let your will be done in this invitation. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And God bless you. I want you to ask or to uh, stand, please. Heads bowed, eyes closed. And before we have our invitation, let me ask you this. Heads bowed, eyes closed, please. No one looking around. I'm going to ask you a question. And I'm not, going to, uh, I'm not going to embarrass you. I'm not going to call your name. I'm not going to come back to where you are. But I wonder if there's someone here today you're not saved. You've never trusted Christ as Savior. You'd raise your hand. You're, you're not saved. I, j I just want to know. I'm not going to embarrass you. I just want to pray for you. If you'll give me a moment to look around, I just want to see. Is there anyone here you do not know Jesus Christ as your Savior? Anyone's, I'm looking around. There, God bless you. Thank you. You can put your hand down. Anyone else? Never trusted Christ as Savior. Anyone else? I'm looking around. Now, let me ask you this Has the word spoken to someone today, maybe as a parent, a grandparent, maybe as a teacher, maybe as a van driver? Thank you, God bless you. The press, God bless you, God bless you. They've impressed something upon your heart. 
God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you all over the church. Amen. God bless you. Oh, God bless you. Amen. These are, uh, man, these are important days. During our invitation, I I'm just going to ask you to stay in your prayerful position. And David will sing the song. If you want to be saved, you come. We'll have someone pray with you, give your life to Christ. Those of you, many of you, raise your hands. Maybe you want to just come and pray. Lord, give me compassion for these kids. Lord, give, help me to be a, a diligent parent for my kids to teach them about Jesus to prepare them for life whatever whoever as the Lord speaks to your heart maybe just want to come and pray and help us to work together Lord in protecting our kids would you come as David sings if you want to be saved you just want to pray. There are deacons I here who, who can talk with you. If you want to just come and, and pray with them. If you just want to come and, and pray on your his own. His wondrous love to me. I invite you to come. On the cruel cross he suffered. If you want to just come and pray at the, the altar. You want to pray with the deacons. To set me free.